Uh, welcome to um, our chapter 5 video. Uh, we're looking at improving the tech support version 1. So before watching this video, make sure you've got a good understanding of the tech support version 1, uh, which is in a previous video. Um, we're going to use the term improve loosely here. We're not really going to improve it that much. Um, we're just going to do a couple of extra bits to it. So as you know that in the tech support version 1, there's only one response um, that gets given to the user who's trying to um, get their problem sorted. Um, one way to uh, loosely improve the program would be to give them a list of random responses. So rather than just the one response, there's lots of responses. Um, the other thing which we're going to have a look at is the improving of the exit of the program. So in terms of producing random responses, how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we need to create an array list of responses. So create an array list in the same way that we did before. Uh, array list of type string, and we're going to call it responses. Um, we then need to call uh, the responses.get uh, method, uh, the array list, uh, dot get method, um, and they give it a parameter of an index. Now, in terms of giving a res random response, we're not going to be, be able to give a very random response if we just give um, uh, the same index every time. So we need to have some kind of way of creating uh, a variable which, or um, creating the index variable which is going to be random. So that's what we've got to do. Now in order to do that we can use the um, random class which is inbuilt um, with Java. So let's just have a little think about um, using the uh, random class. Um, so once we've created our, our array list of string, then we need to use this random class. And what you can do is you have to import the java.util package. Um, you can in, in, um, import just the, uh, the random class if you like, um, as shown on the screen there. You then create a random object, um, and then the random um, object, in this case we're going to call it rand, um, is, has a number of different methods which can be performed on it. Um, the one shown on the screen there, you've got rand.nextint, that will return an integer number um, within the range of integer numbers. Um, so that's not very really useful for us because that's a lot of numbers and that includes negative numbers as well. Um, the next line there um, will int value equals 1 plus rand dot next int 100. Um, the way that it works is if you have a look at the random um, class, which I'd encourage you to do in the Java API, you'll see if you give a, a parameter, um, then it returns naught to that parameter, a, ram uh, um, a random number from naught to that um, top parameter. So in our case there we're going to get stuff like 65, 32, but we're not going to get 0 because we've got the 1 plus in there. Um, so it'll be 1 to 100 in that case on the second line. On the third line here, this is the one which we're going to be using, um, int index equals rand.nextint, so we're looking for a next int. But the clever bit for us now is we don't want to have a random num number bigger than the biggest index in the responses array list. So in that case, in order to find that, we're just going to call the responses.size method. Um, so the array list size method, and that will return the size of the array list. Therefore, we're definitely not going to get an index which is bigger than the biggest index in the array list. Uh, when you are looking at a random class, have a look at other methods in the class to see um, what, what else exists. So I'd encourage you to look at that in the API now. So here's the structure of the program, how we're going to do it. Um, we're going to create our random object, um, which we're going to call uh, random generator. Um, we're then going to create our array list, which we're going to call responses, and then we're going to um, fill responses. So we've got a, a method there, which is just all the method there, fill responses, is going to do is create a, an array list full of um, our wild and wacky responses, which we're going to give to people trying to solve their, um, solve their computing problems. Um, finally, then the generate response method, which previously was pretty basic, is going to be a little bit more complicated now. Um, we're going to do what we did on the previous slide there, which is create um, an index, um, and then using, as discussed, we're going to get a number from naught to the size of the array list, um, and then we're going to re return um, the uh, the randomized index, um, and that will be the randomized uh, parameter. Uh, for the get method in the responses class. So we should get a uh, random uh, message from our array list. So that will improve our, um, our class so far. So what else can we do to improve it? We can also improve the exit, um, uh, how the program exits. So if you consider what it currently looks like, it looks something like that. If input dot starts with um, the string by, then finished equals true. So the problem is in this case is if the user types capital letter uh, 
BYE, so capitals, it will not work because um, it's, it's looking for a very specific string and the case has to match. Similarly, if there's any spaces around that string, um, then that's not going to work either. So, it's, so that's not brilliant if, if they, um, the user accidentally had a space or capitals in it, then they wouldn't be able to exit from the program. So this is what we could do. Um, if you have a look at the class, or you can just look here, um, you'll see that there's a, an input reader created. Um, and then we do the string input equals reader dot get input. And what that will do is that will return a type string. Um, and that type string might have spaces and in uppercase. So I want you to have a look now in the API um, and just have a look at um, what you can do to a string. So one of the things you can do, um, as shown here, is you can trim it. And if you look in the API, you'll see that the trim method will um, reduce and remove any white spaces either side. So what we can do then is we can say string trim string equals input dot trim, and then what we'll do is that would we'll return a string which has um, had the end sort of um, trimmed. Um, finally, in, or in order to put to lowercase, what we can do is we can then uh, use the trim string which we've just created. Um, and then put that to lowercase. So again, if you have a look at the string API, you'll see that there's a method in there called to lowercase, which will um, make sure that the string is only um, reproduced in lowercase. So we could then do that string, lower string equals trim string to lowercase. Now, we could do that, or we could um, have a little bit of a shortcut. Now this is one of the real advantages of Java and the dot notation. Um, you can you can put all of that together so you get method calls on top of method calls. So I'm just going to go through that with you now. So this um, that line of code there will effectively uh, do something very similar to those three lines of code there. You just short up the whole thing. Um, so the important bit here. The important bit here is the left hand side must be the same type as the right hand side. So the left hand side here is of type string. So in total, with all of these methods called, it must be of type string. So the best way to do that and to test that, and when you work with Java, you'll start to see that um, you're going to get lots of these um, dot 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 method calls on top of each other. So the best way to do it is just to make sure you're happy with what's going on on the right hand side. So that's of type string. To the, or the left hand side is a type string, so the right hand side must also be a type string. So first of all we need to work out what the type this is. So if you have a look in the input reader class you'll see that that returns a type string. Uh, we can then call string dot, um, a string type on the, the trim method and you'll see that, that returns a type string. And then with this string here it's string dot to lowercase up here um, and then see what that type that returns and you'll see that that also returns a type string okay so that's the way you work that out and it's important then that you make sure that the left hand side is equal the left hand side type is equal to the right hand side type Okay, um, so that's pretty much the, uh, the end of this exercise, looking at improvements to the tech support system. Um, some exercises there for you looking at the random class um, and improvements to the uh, responder class and a couple of extension exercises there for you as well. Okay, so good luck with all that and I'll see you next time.